welcome Lisa Steiner to Ask a Scientist. Thanks so much for letting us introduce you to everybody. The picture that's at the beginning of your introductory video is some spectacular photos of sperm whales from your company, Well Watch Azores. So thank you for letting us use that and welcome. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So my name's Lisa Steiner. I'm a marine biologist. I work in the Azores. Uh, specifically in Fayal in the Azores. So the Azores are in the middle of the Atlantic, about uh, halfway, not quite, between New York and Lisbon. They are Portuguese. Lisa, what do you do? You're a marine biologist, but what exactly do you do? I've been studying mainly sperm whales since uh, 1988. I came out here two weeks after I graduated university with a, a job, which is very rare for most marine biologists. And uh, I was with the Song of the Whale, the boat that belongs to the International Fund for Animal Welfare. And I remained on that boat uh, till 92. And then in 92, uh, they went to Scotland to look at minke whales. So I came back to the Azores in 93 and set up a whale watching company to kind of carry on the research that we started. And that's where all the information comes from. And it was mainly sperm whales to start with, but then we've expanded our season into the spring and now we see blue whales, fin whales, some humpback whales occasionally. Not very many orcas here, so if you want orcas don't come to these oars. Ah, yes, but that's okay because they're pretty much everywhere else and they may be there with the way things are changing. And they just appear out of the blue and uh, we don't know exactly why, when or where. And it's probably a good thing for them if they're offshore on the banks rather than being here 24-7, they'd be watched all the time. Uh, where did you go to university? I went to the University of Miami. I graduated in 1988, oh. marine science and biology degree. So are you originally from the Azores? Nope, I'm American. I was born in Illinois and grew up in Wisconsin, about as far away from the sea as you can get. I love to ask people this question that, are, that grew up landlocked. How did you decide that marine biology was the way you wanted to, to go? Well, I, I did live on Lake Michigan. That's one of the big, bigger lakes in the States. So uh, I went fishing with my dad in the summertime. So that was my summer job. Of course, I'm of an age when Flipper was on television. That was the start. And then before everybody realized how horrible it was for the dolphins to be in captivity, we went to SeaWorld and saw them there and kind of started from there. And all my science fair projects, and term papers and everything were on Dolphin intelligence, or dolphin this, or dolphin that. You and I are close to the same age, but people that are younger than us have no idea who Flipper is. Can you explain? Flipper was uh, a dolphin that was friends with two young kids down in the Florida Keys. Uh, he would help whenever anybody was in danger out at sea. He would come and find the kids and tell them, and vice versa, if they had a problem, they used to put a big old car air horn under the water and call the dolphin to help them if they were in trouble. That was at a time where we didn't know too much about dolphin behaviors. Now we know there's a lot of things about that that weren't quite right, but uh, it yes. did get people interested, exactly. didn't it? I think there were five different dolphins played Flipper, and I don't think I ever noticed that they were different dolphins at the time. <laughs> I probably might spot that nowadays. <laughs> I, think, I think so. Based on what you do, where you come from, the places that you studied and how much time you spent on the sea. I would love to know your favorite story, the thing that you remember that you just had to catch your breath. Uh, well, there's been a few. I think the first one that kind of made me go, wow, was the very first match I ever made. Before digital cameras, we had black and white film and the second year I was here, we had permission to use one of the dark rooms here. So I was in the dark room developing film and then looking at the contact sheets and going, oh, that looks quite familiar. And then uh, went back to the boat. We all lived on a boat and found the first match that was from 1987. So I was quite good at it. You know, it's like a game where you lift up the tile or whatever and see what it is. And then you have to remember it and then match it. I'm fairly good at that with sperm whales, so I kind of remember a lot of them now by eye. And since then, I've got to know quite a few different individuals. Do you have a favorite? Um, I do a little dance, usually, <laughs> um, when I see either 1019 or number 19. Number 19 was first seen in 1987, the year before I started. 
and 1019 was seen the first year that I started. So these whales are at least 40 years old, you know, which is kind of middle-aged for them. They live about 60 or 70 years. So I've been watching them for about half their life. Or maybe they've been watching me. <laughs> oh, that's true, isn't it? So we know the species, you really have a love for sperm whales and learning their behaviors. But there's a lot of behaviors that sperm whales and, and other marine animals do. Do you have a favorite topic, a favorite behavior, anything in particular that you really like? Well, my specialty, if you like, is I like finding out where they go around the Atlantic. Um, so I know some of the females that we've seen here have been seen in Madeira and the Canaries. And some of the big males have been seen in Norway. That's what gets me going, really, is finding people who have images that I can then see and find out where my ladies go when they're not here. The males we only see usually once, so we don't generally see the same males very often. But the females, they usually, several groups come back year after year. And we see them for at least a few weeks in the summertime. That's fantastic. You know, we know that sperm whales don't spend a whole lot of time on the surface, especially the males. But when you see those groups with moms and all the females yeah. and the young, then you have more of an opportunity to do that. Your best advice to somebody that you would talk to about getting to do what you do, what would that be? Be patient. Don't expect to make lots of money work hard, volunteer, and I mean nowadays that's really the only route that's taking away jobs from people who shouldn't have to volunteer, but once you get your foot in the door somewhere, then it's a lot easier to actually get a job. That's how I kind of started out. Yeah, it's not easy. I expect a lot of questions about how to get into the field, and it seems to be on everybody's mind. I want to do what I love to do, but how do I pay the bills and eat and have a roof over my head? Uh, the number of people that come on my whale watch tours to say, oh, I wanted to be a marine biologist, and then they just didn't keep up with it. And they need to pay the bills, so they become an accountant or whatever. But the ones that do, I find, are, are very passionate, and we love what we do. I agree with that 100%. Thank you so much for coming and introducing yourself, see if we can get people to subscribe and hit that 1,000 mark so that you can answer these questions live. I'm keeping my fingers crossed we get to that 1,000. All right, cheers. <laughs>